Sweet home, Santa Barbara, where the skies are so blue. Sweet home, Santa Barbara, what's worked for me can work for you. Welcome back, friends, to Sweet Home Santa Barbara. I'm your co-host, Jonathan Robinson, and with my friend, realtor, and co-host, Scott Williams. And Scott, I love these uh, historical views of Santa Barbara because I learned so much. It's also very interesting. Today, we're going to talk about the West Side, which um, I've been to your home by Eileen's Park in the hills above the West Side today. Uh, what can you tell us about this neighborhood that you're kind of part of? Yeah, I love I love the West Side. There's so many nice parts of Santa Barbara. I've lived all over this town. It has wonderful neighborhoods, no doubt about it. And the history of the West Side of Santa Barbara starts out pretty much in the mid 1800s and coming through to the present day, it was grazing land and it's turned into a very vibrant community. And Prior to statehood back in 1850, it was a an area of uh, plantings for farmers, and it, it sort of had the marshy shores all the way down there at the beach. And uh, after we became a, uh, a town, uh, you know, an American town in 1850, the council of uh, Santa Barbara laid out a grid of streets and did a survey. And uh, they started naming the you know, the city, the streets, including the West Side, after things like famous battles and heroes, historic figures. And pretty soon after the 1850s, it turned into plots of land from five to 40 acres uh, it was being used for you know, growing crops. So it started out as farmland. What kind of crops? Well, the a couple of uh, the famous fellows. Uh, We've, we're talking about Albert Packard and, and Joseph Sexton. They put their imprints on the area there. Packard established himself a grand mar uh, mansion on the west side. It's no longer there. And he built an, the largest adobe for a California winery as at the time. And that's no longer here either. And Sexton planted about a thousand uh, walnuts, those little tiny plants, and he, he spread them out on a 40-acre a parcel of land on the west side and started growing walnuts. And he brought quite a bit of fame to Santa Barbara as a source of walnuts as he marketed them all over the United States. Are those trees or walnuts ever are still there? Well, not from not from the eight, eight, uh, 1860s, um, too, too, far, too far back. We, we don't we have walnut trees on the west side, but they would be the, the children or grandchildren of those trees. Uh huh. So how did it evolve after after that? Well, it, it sort of became the first Anglo neighborhood attracting white settlers to Santa Barbara. And the architecture shifted from the adobes that they'd been building back in you know the mid 1800s towards wood and even brick construction. And they put up a number of churches around town because we started to have a non-Catholic population. And this all culminated in 1887 when the railroad arrived in Santa Barbara. And it kind of ended the isolation of Santa Barbara back in those days. And, you know, it, it started to establish itself as a, a resort, uh, a health resort, because we had back in Montecito, we had those hot springs we've talked about on the Montecito history. And back in the day when the railroad first hit town, there was 3,500 people living in, in Santa Barbara, but there was no hospital, no medical facilities of any sort. And so it, that was seen as a missing in the town. And they established Cottage Hospital, which was more of a, like a house that was more like a cottage <laughs> in uh, 1891. And over the years, they've built that. That's part of the West Side. They've built that up to be an entire block, and they've rebuilt it in just the last decade or so. I think about $700 million is the most recent remodeling of Cottage Hospital. So wow, we, that's, a, that's an expensive cottage, $700 million. Was it, yes. Do you know how it got its name? Was that 
because it was a cottage at one time. Yes, or? it was. It was a cottage. There's there's some pictures of it. Uh, it was sort of more house like, but uh, much more on the scale of a house. And it was worth, you know, a cottage would have been a descriptive of it. Yeah. Uh-huh. So uh, what happened when after the hospital got made? Well, we became actually a center for health and not just from the hot springs, but uh, Dr. William Sansom, we have the Sansom Clinic here in town, and he established the Sansom Clinic in, in 1920. Something he did that was really pioneering in the health field is he isolated insulin and mm-hmm. began to attract the diabetes patients from all over the globe. And for several years, the only place you could get diabetes on the planet was right here in Santa Barbara until it became more widely available after 1923. And the Sansom Clinic established at that time just sold like last week to uh, Sutter Health, which is a Northern California, a big outfit. And I don't know if they're going to change the name of it or not, but it's right across the street from Sansom. Sansom Clinic is right across the street from Cottage Hospital. And uh, health and the hospital and the clinic have, have definitely significantly contributed to the West Side's economy. Yeah. So when did West Side stop being farm country, more uh, house country? Well, that pretty much came with 1900. The turn of the century brought electric streetcars, horse, you know, horse-drawn carts, the fields of walnuts and lemons and oranges, the dairies, the palm nurseries. There was even a ranch specializing in pompous grass. All of these began to convert into neighborhoods. Um, although as they in, as part of that conversion, there was a time when there was pony cart racings and even a polo field there on, on the west side. Horse racing and polo sounds like uh, my kind of place. Yeah, absolutely, Jonathan. You would have loved horseback riding back in the day when, you know, well, the cars hadn't arrived yet, so we were all driving around on horses. Uh-huh. Um, landmarks like Oak Park, th- these were preserved through, uh, you know, community contributions. And these were places where people would go with their horses and their carts and have picnics right alongside the creek there going back more than 100 years. Hmm. Right in that same neighborhood, sort of between Oak Park and uh, Cottage uh, Hospital area, back in the 1920s, or 1910 to 1921, actually, we had the most famous movie studio in the world. This is called the Flying A uh, Studio, and I believe they made more than 500 movies there over the course of that time. And it was the the greatest source of movies in the world came out of Santa Barbara in those days. Wow. Wow. It's nice to know that the West side was once almost Hollywood. Um, they could have put the big Hollywood sign on the hills above the West side. That's true. Uh, it, you know, I, I they could have said what, yeah, West side or Hollywood, absolutely flying a studios. We, we didn't get ever subjected to that, that, uh, you know, the mountains being filled up with that big, uh, that big picture. But, you know, I guess we could have been, we could have why, been. Why didn't, uh, why didn't it become more of a Hollywood area or Hollywood move to Hollywood? Well, it's, we were doing Westerns was the, by far the most popular uh, type of films that they did. Although they did, you know, this is the early days. This is in the silent era. And, um, you know, talkies came in in 1928. And so, just south of here, they had more open space for because they had to go up the San Inez Valley. They had to go over the hill mm. to shoot the the Holly, the, you know, the the movies out there in the you know the open space of the San Inez Valley, and there was just more space heading down to L.A. and it just gravitated, just kept moving south. Mm. Although it's part of the 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 structure of the west side is in 1928 we did build the arlington theater just on the edge because they had a big old organ in there of the the silent era just as talkies took off so we Mm -hmm. still have one of the greatest popcorn palaces ever built in the arlington theater right there on the west side yeah so it's uh one of the oldest residential neighborhoods uh what else can you say about the west side well more than half of the houses were built prior to 1940. So, you know, there's a historical sense to the neighborhood. And it, it's always been one of the more affordable neighborhoods in Santa Barbara. And it it, it it 
attracts a diverse uh, population, you know, looking for making Santa Barbara their home. So the West Side is an enjoyable part of our community. Sky, I know there's a really beautiful park on the West Side. Do you know anything about that history? Yes, absolutely. Uh, today we call it Ealing's Park. Virgil Ealing's had the park named after him because he donated a lot of money at the end to help pull it together. But let's go back a few years here. Um, before World War II in Santa Barbara, the dump for the city was right there in Las Positas Valley. And I'm not sure exactly how, how far back it goes, but I, I think it may go back in the 20s. Um, it was there for a long time. And the city I closed it as a dump about 1965. And um, so they had, you know, like a lot of dumps, that you, you dump all your trash there and then they pile dirt over the top of it. It's in a valley and it just fills up, you know, and eventually the whole thing gets full. So we had that happen. So that's part of the reason why the, especially the Mesa, but the Mesa and the West side weren't such a great part of town because they were where the dump was. It doesn't mm. make a great neighborhood to have the dump in the middle of it back in the day. So in 1977, the city proposed converting, this is 97 acres from a dump into a park and an organization got together and decided that they would take this on. And so it is, um, it is privately funded, the Las Positas Park Foundation. It is the largest privately funded park in the United States. The Santa Barbara City rents it to the Park Foundation for a dollar a year. I don't know. It's a long lease, 50, 100 years. I don't know how long it goes. But this private organization totally takes care of the park. There's 97 acres. Hmm. So um, in 1994, the the Park Foundation got an opportunity to buy the 133 acres next to that that was owned by the Society of Jesus, commonly known as the Jesuits. It's part of the Catholic Church, kind of an educational wing part of the, they have a lot of schools. They'd always thought they were going to put a school there, but they they wisely decided that it was in the middle of a housing track and next to the old dump, and they, they wouldn't do that. And so they put it up for sale, and the Park Foundation agreed to buy it, and incorporate that into the park. So now you have 230 acres. We're starting to get to have a pretty sizable park here. Yeah. Of great benefit to the west side and to the Mesa both. Um, there's even there's more than three mile long track that goes around the outside of it. So there's a nice trail system in there. Uh, there's three baseball fields. There's two soccer fields, a BMX track, which is for little bicycles for the young people to ride around in. Uh, six tennis courts and uh, an outlook over the city, which has one of the finest views of the city up at the Godric Grove. And the, the outlook from up there is just an amazing view of Santa Barbara. And this is about a block from my home. And um, uh, going back to Virgil at Virgil Ealings, it's named after him. He went to UCSB, our Go Gauchos, our, our alma mater, you and I. And uh, he started Digital Instruments, which back in the day was quite a important company early in the very early tech days and made a lot of money from that. And he gave a million and a half dollars back in 1999 that finished off the purchase of all this land, got everybody paid off and uh, contributed to the upkeep of this. It has about 250,000 visitors a year. And I'm one of them, that's for sure. It's a great, it's a great spot. It's right across the street, too, from the uh, Douglas Preserve, which is another 80 acres or 70 acres. Well, I lost track of that. So we have about 300 acres of parkland all together between the two parks running them together. An amazing huh. place, an amazing gift to Santa Barbara. Thank God for people like him that are willing to think ahead. How can I uh, do that? What's the best way to contact you? It's Scott at scottwilliams.com. And thanks to our listeners for another episode of Sweet Home Santa Barbara. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to our podcast on your favorite app. If you know someone preparing to sell their home, please tell them about the podcast. Visit scottwilliams.com to contact me and download the two free e-booklets. Is My House Saleable Now? 
and how not to buy a money pit. Thank you for listening.